Welcome back to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. Today in lesson 28, we will build off of lesson 27 by learning four more date functions. Let's start with the days function. So we're going to assume we are working on a project this summer, starting on June 17th and going till August 22nd. If we want to calculate how many days are in between those two dates, we can use the days function. I'm going to select the end date and then the start date, put a closing bracket and press enter, and there's 66 days between the start and end date. Now there's another way we can calculate this and we can simply do the end date minus the start date. And you can see we get the same answer. Now the days function counts the total number of days between two dates, including weekends and holidays. But for this project, we are only going to be working on weekdays and we want to take weekends and holidays off. This means we need to calculate the net number of workdays. And to do this, we'll use a new function called network days. Network days automatically does not include weekends in its day count, and it also allows you to specify any holidays to take off. Below here, I have two holidays listed. The first is on July 1st, which is a Canadian holiday known as Canada Day, and the second is on July 4th, which is an American holiday known as Independence Day. Assume we will work with the Canadian calendar first. So let's go ahead and enter the function into the cell here. And I'm going to select my start date, my end date. And then you can see the third argument holidays is in brackets, which means it's optional. So let's just ignore it for now. Press enter. And you can see that there are 47 workdays in Canada. Now let's go in and play around with that holidays argument. And I'm going to select the date format of Canada Day below here and then press enter. So you can see it's 47 again, which is a little strange, but we'll come back to that. All right, now let's go to the cell below and use the American calendar. So we'll type the function in again, select the start date, the end date, and then this time we'll select the date format of Independence Day, press enter. And you can see there's 46 work days in the US, which is one less day than Canada. Now you might be wondering why is there one less work day in Canada than the US? And that's because the Canadian holiday of Canada Day falls on a weekend. Now remember the function network days automatically does not include weekends in its day count. So including the holiday of Canada Day into the function did not change the number of workdays at all. If we go into our format here, we can actually change the dates to show which day of the weeks that each holiday falls on. And you can see that Canada Day does fall on a Saturday and Independence Day falls on a Tuesday. Now, Tuesday is part of a weekday, which network days normally counts. So since it was specified as a holiday in the function, it subtracted it from the network days count, which is why there's one less workday uh, in the US than Canada. Let's move on to the workday function now, which is useful for planning vacations. We are going to fill out this table with some data, and let's assume we want to plan a vacation with a start date of December 17th of this year. Now we want to take a total of 15 workdays off for the vacation. And now we must enter any holidays that overlapped during the time we want to take the vacation. So since we're looking at December, a um, overlapping holiday is going to be Christmas. So we'll put December 25th, 2023 in there. And then another overlapping holiday will be uh, New Year's Day, which is January 1st of 2024. Now we can use the workday function to calculate what our first day back at work will be after the vacation. So I'm going to type in the function, I'm going to select the start date, the number of work days, and then I'm going to select both holiday dates here and then press enter. And you can see the first day back at work will be Tuesday, January 9th of 2024. Now let's move on to the final function in today's video, which is weekday. 
Weekday assigns different numbers to days of the week and returns those values based on the date it is given. So let's go ahead and enter our function into this cell. And we'll put the first argument as the date. And then the second argument return type is in brackets, which means it's optional. I'm going to enter a two. And you can see here that using the number two assigns Monday to the number one and assigns Sunday to the number seven. I'm going to press enter and you can see that it's returned to six, which means July 1st of this year occurred on a Saturday. If I go in and change the format of the date, we can check if that is true. Okay, so that's correct. Now let's fill in the rest of the formula uh, for the column there. Now let's try playing around with that optional second argument there. We delete the two and just do a closing bracket now. We can see that all the numbers have changed. And this means that day seven is now associated with Saturday and day one is associated with Sunday. So if we omit that last argument, the week always starts on Sunday and ends on Saturday. Personally, I prefer to think that a week starts on Monday and ends on Sunday. So let's change it back to um, a two. And I'm going to update the rest of the column. And that concludes our lesson for today where we covered four different date functions. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next lesson.